So just a few introductions for everyone. This, this evening is part of our series of webinars for parish and town councils. Um, as you know, we've got Andrew Jameson, who's the Norfolk County Council Cabinet, Cabinet Member for Finance, an elected county councillor representing the North Norfolk Coast. He will be presenting the, North, uh, the Norfolk County Council's budget for 2022-23. We've also got this evening from the consultation team, we've got Sheridan Smith, who's attending from Norfolk County Council, as I said, from part of the consultation team. And if you've got any questions or points you'd like to raise during the presentation, please put these in the chat. At the end of the presentation, Sheridan will go through the, the points with Andrew. And we've also got Nathan Wilcox, Wilcox, sorry, and he's also from the consultation team at Norfolk County Council, and he'll be running the presentation slides, et cetera. And I'm, I'm told he's a whiz on the technology if we've got any problems with technology this evening. So without further ado, I'd just like to introduce um, Andrew, um, Norfolk County Council, can, can, sorry, County Councillor. So over to yourself and Andrew. Thanks. Um, well, thanks very much indeed, Jerry. And, um, and really good to, uh, to, to, to be back, um, uh, to, to be speaking to everyone here through, through now. I, I, I regard this as an important part of the uh, consultation process because it gives me a chance to, uh, to speak to a, a, a number of you who then obviously represent uh, your, 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 your residents. It's a really good way of, 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 um, of, of, of you know, you, you know, thrashing through what is a big and complicated uh, uh, process. And I'm really sorry that for second year running now, of course, we're not doing this face to face, but that we are. That's life as we know it now. Um, moving straight on to slide two, um, please, Nathan. So uh, the council has a legal duty to consult. Uh, on our annual budget and uh, and um, and our proposed increases to council tax, I think somebody may be unmuted because I'm getting I'm getting um, a, a, my my own uh, dulcet tones coming back to me. Um, so perhaps if everyone be on mute. Um, so we have a uh, you, you know a, a, a legal duty to uh, uh, to consult on the proposed increases to council tax. Now, we also have a duty to consult um, on any proposed savings that would cause a reduction or indeed a change in the services that we are providing. Now, at this stage, and I'll explain why it's this stage, but it's interesting that this year we are only consulting on the council tax level. And I wouldn't dream of suggesting that that might be a clue as to whether we are cutting anything or not, uh, but you might like to think of it like that. Uh, in any event, um, I want to speak to you about the budget in the round and how we go about its development. Uh, next slide, please, uh, Nathan. So usually we consult in October, but we delayed this year. First, there was the Build Back Better plan for health and social security, which was released in September, which insofar as uh, our adult social care was concerned was something of a damp squib, as you're probably aware by now. Uh, it was followed uh, by the Chancellor's Spending Review on the 27th of October. But the good news is uh, that the review has provided for a multi-year settlement. Now, assuming that is mirrored in the local government spending review, which should be due on the 16th of December, uh, that would be extremely welcome in helping the council set a sustainable medium-term financial strategy. We'll know what the envelope of our, our revenues can be and therefore it really helps us a lot. Uh, next slide please Nathan. So <coughs> last year uh, I said that we were having to deliver a budget in a period of unprecedented uncertainty. So I suppose it's fair to say that this year is not unprecedented, um, but uh, it is still extremely uncertain. And as I, I will explain, COVID is having a continued medium term impacts on the delivery of adults and children's services. It's either due to the release of pent up demand or because of continued costs associated with dealing uh, with its effects or with delays to transformation programs, more on that later too, within those two demand-led departments. Now, unlike the government or the NHS, 
uh, or indeed many other public bodies, the council has to balance its budget annually. And I mean, that is a fact that probably comes as a, a considerable relief uh, to many of you. But it means that we can only spend what we receive through government grants to schools, for example, uh, through income earned from our services, such as entry to our museums or uh, raised from the sale of assets and, of course, from council tax. So what we raise from council tax is described as our net budget. And at the moment, I am forecasting that to be in the region of 455 million. We're facing considerable challenges when setting the 22-23 budget. In February this year, we forecast a gap of 39 million. And we continue to, you know, we continue to deal with the implications uh, of COVID-related pressures, such as lower council tax receipts. However, COVID isn't the only pressure. In addition, of course, there are leg legislative requirements, such as the unfunded costs of the national minimum wage. There's rising economic uh, and inflationary costs, particularly in residential care. And there are demand and demographic uh, pressures, for example, we have an age profile across the county that is much higher than the country, country as a whole. Now, demographic pressures amount to a recurrent 18 to 20 million pound or cost to the council each year, a rising cost. Next slide, please, Nathan. So there are limited ways in which we can make savings. Basically, therefore, our whole focus remains on transforming our services to do them better and more cost effectively. I've also ramped up my contacts with MPs and within government. I, I do a great deal more lobbying uh, as I, I have become I'm more familiar with this role because um, there is still much to address. We have no additional funding for COVID beyond the end of this financial year. We have no uplift in the public health grant. We have no progress on much overdue reform, such as a fair funding reform or a form of business rates. And as I say, we're setting this budget in a background of great uncertainty. It's hit by a triple whammy of rising budget pressures, uncertainty over government funding, whilst trying to plan how we deal with the short, but more importantly now, the medium term um, um, implications of the pandemic. Next slide, please, Nathan. So when we come to make budget choices, we are very constrained by the need to protect statutory services. Indeed, many of the discretionary decisions are made in order to deliver statutory services more effectively. We may give grants to the voluntary sector, for example, in order to deliver services from, uh, on behalf of children's, uh, children's services. So, on top of the savings proposals agreed with the main spending departments of 24.5 million so far, I have had to ask directors to identify a further 5 million in recurrent savings, it's not one off. Uh, in uh, in the short term, should the local government settlement come in at the bottom end of the range of expectations? It may not, it may come in better, but you know, I think uh, it is best to be ready. Now we will be looking to make these savings um, as we have so far by looking at what we do and how we can do it better internally. Now to do all this, I have one key tailwind and it is the tailwind upon which I am more and more focused. The Council has been quick to utilise changing technology overall and of understanding ways of providing services better. Next slide, please. So, badged as transformation, it is a way of describing delivering services better or smarter working. It drives change with the aid of technology or best practice. And by doing so, we are able to improve the delivery of our services, particularly our statutory services. So looking 
briefly at the, uh, at, at, the, at the savings proposed by adult social services. We use a transformation program now. It's now in its third year, in fact, uh, to save money uh, on service delivery. Now, I'm more than happy to go into some detail on the individual areas um, of that, uh, it, particularly this promoting independence that you see on your slide now uh, at, at, at the end in, in, in terms of answering specific queries about what that means. There's a little more detail on it as well in the consultation uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, website that, that we have uh, where, we're, where we're calling for uh, for your views but I'm happy to go into it um, it's uh, it's an area of, of considerable focus for us at the moment uh, and uh, and and ongoing focus what I what is what I can say is a general rule is that a lot of the promoting independence ideas are really about making our people uh, or enabling our people to work more effectively. Next slide, please. Similarly, uh, I'll quickly run through the savings proposed uh, within the services, the children's services budget. Now, all of these savings relate to our transformation program or the transformation program that was put in place uh, two years ago. Uh, by Sarah Tuff, the Director of Children's Services. Originally badged No Wrong Door, uh, now known as New Roads, and, uh, and the basic bones of it are up on the screen in front of you, but prevention and early intervention, just as a case example, means supporting families to stay together so that fewer children need to be taken into care in the first place. And again, happy to talk about that at the Q&A at the end. So um, savings uh, so far are uh, were proposed at 5.7. They're slightly low, lower than that at the minute. But as I say, none of this is coming from a reduction in the quality of the service. We're not having to uh, 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 consult on anything. Next slide, please. Community and environmental services is responsible for the delivery of a huge and diverse range of services across the county. I mean, the one unifying factor is that they impact on residents, on visitors and businesses every day. They are the services which you, as, uh, as, um, uh, as, as, as ambassadors for, for, for your towns and villages, they are the services uh, which you are most uh, focused on making sure that we get right. Now, frankly, uh, this is because it impacts upon all our residents so much. It is an area we're keen to invest further, whether on footpaths or cycleways, in libraries, or on a whole range of environmental measures. It also means ensuring that critical activities like, uh, for example, um, uh, the delivery of, uh, of our low COVID local outbreak control, uh, supporting community recovery via the social infrastructure fund or the community renewal funds, which are both, as I like to tell the parishes in my own division. Uh, these are both funds which I would urge you as, 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 as councillors to, to, to look at and, and apply for. Um, we support the economic bounce back, um, or we support our commitment, of course, to zero carbon by 2030. This is, uh, this is all coming through community and environmental services. Um, it as, a, as, a, as an organization or department is already some way down the transformation road. And that means they're well versed in delivering budget savings without a reduction in, in savings, which is why none of the proposed listed or proposals listed uh, in the consultation documents need to be specifically consulted on. In short, they're not cuts to services. They're part of an overall strategy to de-silo this multidisciplinary department to focus on a broad strategy of service redesign using technology, smarter working practices, 
and a maximizing of external funding. So that sounded a bit of a mouthful. I just give you an example of what I'm trying to focus on. It's to use, is to make sure that people within the environmental group and the, and the highways team and public health actually talk together and work together uh, to not only develop, but to implement our, um, our, our walking and cycling ambitions, just to give an example. Next slide, please. So uh, here's the money shot. Uh, our, our, our net budget, as I say, is basically what we raise in council tax. Uh, which is obviously pretty key to residents and to you um, as their representatives. However, for most of the time, um, I am uh, under the bonnet of, 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 of NCC, uh, focusing on the gross budget, which is 1.5 billion expenditure each and every year. And this is what it's spent on, you can see in front of you. I'd like just to note that the cost of running the council is directly covered by the 5%, 3 plus 1 plus 1, um, uh, that you see at the top of the circle there, together with the 8% in uh, finance general, most of which, though, that 8% is uh, represented uh, 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 by the servicing of debt interest costs. Um, if you, I think, you know, <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's really good to look at this as a whole, but I, I have to say that the uh, pink uh, segment at the bottom right, schools, is pretty much money in, money out. Now that so much of our education system uh, is, is really run by academies and, and similar organizations, um, we, uh, we uh, as it were, um, uh, 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 receive uh, the funding for that, but that then goes straight off um, um, out to schools. So, you know, 20% of that 1.5 billion um, really doesn't, doesn't enter into my life very much on this, the revenue portion. It does big time back in the capital expenditure. Adult social services, you see, is 30% of our budget. Now, this is obviously care, housing with care, looking after our elderly, uh, looking after those with learning disabilities. Uh, and, and you know this is an area where we will be uh, where we are um, uh, uh, through uh, um, uh, you know through, through our transformation program looking to make more effective so next slide please and uh, and and um, and this is uh, where it comes from uh, and this this is why it matters so much uh, and why it is down to us. And I suppose, you know, me at the end of the day, the buck stops here, uh, that, uh, that we have to um, maintain control on the spending to make sure that the money that comes in covers everything effectively and not just council tax, some 30%. Um, but uh, the less well that we manage um, the other areas applying successfully for grant funding, for example, or let alone how we manage our costs, the more it impacts back on that council tax figure. So that's the basis of my, uh, um, my focus, really. Next, um, next slide, please. So um, what happens now? Frankly, you can do no better than, uh, than to, read, uh, to read that straight off the screen. But to, to remind everyone, we are consulting on a 2.99% increase in council tax, of which 1% is ring-fenced for adult social care. You will recall that adult social care represents 30% of our spend, or 456 million gross. So 1% raises about 1% of that figure. Next slide, please. Similarly, we're proposing to raise general council tax by 1.99%. Uh, that, um, uh, again, that uh, the final decision will be taken in February next year. On we go, please, Nathan. 
and the next slide, please. Actually, I shouldn't have shoved you forward, so I'm so sorry. Whip back one, so sorry, because uh, I just want to put that down to what it means in pounds. Um, so uh, that represents uh, a, a 44 pound a year, about a pound a week, uh, for the average band D home in the county. It goes up to 1,517 pounds for a band D home. It's probably just worth bearing in mind that this 2.99% increase uh, is comparable with an inflation of about 4.2% currently. So now, next slide. So, but just before uh, we open the floor to questions, uh, this final slide shows how we are consulting. And I urge you to notify residents of the online form or if they want to use any of the methods shown above. Now, I think you've heard enough from me um, and, uh, and Sheridan's been keeping a close eye on the chat uh, and has grouped uh, questions where broadly similar themes are mentioned um, and will ask questions on behalf of the floor. But if we don't get to you or if you have further thoughts and ideas, please email uh, Jeremy or or probably Sheridan or I with any further queries. So thank you very much. We might leave that final slide up there, uh, Nathan, just so people can keep an eye on that. So. Right, well, sh should I jump in, Andrew? Thank you very much for that. Um, in the chat, the, the really the only question that's being asked is whether or not um, we're going to share copies of, of your slides for the presentation that, that you've very just happy for that. been through. I'm more yeah, so. than happy to do that, of course. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, so I, 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 I tell you, team, it's a fatal thing <laughs> to let me loose and answer, <laughs> answer my own questions because you know, you, I can go on for ages. Uh, but, you know, just I, I, I just might start off because, you know, I whizzed through that uh, that transformation uh, program uh, idea, you, you know, and, and, and I just thought I might just um, perhaps if I can find the, for the paper, you know, just have a little think about about what it may, you know, you know, councils always come up with 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 new wizard wheezes and wonderful slogans and you know, and I think it's really important, um, you know, to bring it down into reality and 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 what what it means. So promoting independence, you know, what on earth does that mean? Well. Uh, you know, I think just I've got the little list here. So, you know, investing in early intervention and targeted prevention. So that that really uh, means, um, you know, investing in specific services. And really the ones that I'm talking about here are reablement and enablement. Um, now, reablement is what happens if you're in hospital uh, and the NHS want you out as fast as you possibly can or your gran. Um, and uh, you, you know, we we uh, uh, you, you take 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 uh, you or your gran on um, um, uh, uh, and to, to look after uh, and get people up and running again. If 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 this doesn't happen, uh, and an NHS simply gets people to go home, or perhaps there isn't an ability to go home, then people are either stuck in hospital or they go back home and they're not really able to uh, have the skill sets to be able to get back um, running it. Reablement helps do that. And, 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 and I think it's a profoundly important thing. Of course, you know, I remember you're talking to the finance um, 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 member uh, and, uh, and therefore by definition, um, I have no heart and therefore I'm looking at this from a finance perspective. So forgive me, but uh, reablement also helps me with my budget because people, are, are, if you don't do things like this, then people aren't picked up and bang, they're, they're on the floor and there's very little else that we can do uh, than, than, than put them, uh, you, you know, to, than help them in, in, in care. And, and that's fine, but that is an expensive option for us and it's not an option which people actually want. So rehabilitation is an important thing. Enablement is a more long-term thing. 
So enablement uh, 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 might be, uh, you know, people with learning disabilities just to help them get up and running and get onto the job market or get, get move, move about our county independently. Andrew, um, um, we've, we've just, we, you, Andrew, we've just had yes, another I, question come, come in. Okay. Um, someone's asking um, if, if inflation is 4.2%, uh, mm -hmm. why isn't council, the council tax increase in line with inflation? Uh, because obviously, otherwise, this is a cut. Um, I'm, saying. I think that is a very good question. All right. So uh, let me go into that in a little bit of detail. In the um, in 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 the Chancellor's review, he he he, as I said, uh, put forward a a three year multi year settlement, and in that settlement, he said that um, um, councils could put up general council tax by 1.99% and adult social care by 1% without, uh, without recourse to a referendum. So, and that's what the level we're putting it up by. However, last year, we deferred 1% in adult social care, which we could have put on council tax at this time. I take the view that with the rise in national insurance of 1.25%, with that aforementioned rise in inflation, with a rise in uh, energy costs, with the freezing of the tax plans, a whole range of, uh, of uh, uh, headwinds are affecting our residents in the course of the next year. It is beholden upon us as a council to look to ourselves first and to uh, 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 once again to make absolutely certain that we deliver the services that we must deliver well to our uh, residents without um, asking unduly uh, for the maximum of, uh, of council tax. It would be a lot easier for me um, to do that, you know, and, you know, but I don't think I should do that. I don't think that is the right approach. As, um, you know, I, I think the right approach is to examine always the way in which we deliver the services and whether we can do them better. I hope that answered the, the, the question. Um, I uh, so you know if there are are no other um, other questions on that, um, I think uh, the best thing um, you know would be Sheridan that definitely uh, do please um, move the um, uh, send send or, or, the, or circulate the, um, uh, the, the 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 presentation that I I gave, um, and yes. as and we might just add on to it. I'm only too happy to put my um, email address at the bottom. Um, if you, you, know, you can obviously find it on uh, on NCC's website, but let's bung it all in, so it's all handy. And I'm only too happy to to take uh, to take questions thereafter. Thank, thank you, Andrew. I think I have just put it in the chat. Um, I put my email address there just to say that if anyone has a question that they would prefer a, a personal response to, um, I can forward those questions to to you or to the relevant okay. department um, for an answer. Um, and I think Jeremy said that I've got he a would. Cracking question. Uh, yeah. I, I think Jeremy said that so he I, I, would I, he would send the um, the slides and the recording out either tomorrow or Friday. Okay, cool. I have got a question here. It was direct to me, and I'm only too happy um, uh, to uh, answer this. Uh, um, Mm -hmm. I will. Okay, so new you've answered something. So, so I, um, uh, I'm just sorry about this, everybody. I'm just quickly seeing if there is a question that I can answer in relation to community fund. What I'll do is I've had this question in relation to community fund, and I will respond 
uh, directly, uh, uh, you know, for that. But I mean, there is provision in the community fund to ensure villages. I mean, the, 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 what I did, okay, so you all know this, but your your uh, district, uh, sorry, your um, county councillor has a local members fund, which was increased from six to 10,000 pounds in the last budget. I, I put that in. Now, I have to tell you that not all, in fact, not the majority of uh, uh, of councillors seem to be using their full um, fund, which is, well, it is precisely for the things that you mentioned here in terms of footpaths, for trods, uh, for, you know, for, for various traffic related um, um, uh, objectives. But we one of the reasons why I raised it was it's also from various environmental schemes so that uh, EV PowerPoints, just as an example. So I would bang on the door uh, when he next turn, or she next turns up at your meeting, just to see whether um, he or she has used that members fund to the max. So that's one way of getting it there. But the community fund, the um, the the uh, the, the um, social infrastructure fund is less for footpaths and and so forth it's more you know for if you have just for say for example a, a, a community hall that needs um, that needs uh, repair or that, that is wanting to put out new services uh, and just needs the capital uh, injected into into that um, it can be um, you know sports operations within your parish or town um, that, that we're very keen to hear from you uh, on on that, so uh, I, I I will uh, follow that up though with a full email of of the, of the of the details of the funds and how to how to apply for them and so forth. 